Hi, Gemini. Welcome to your reading. I'm just going to pull and read whatever comes out. If this resonates for you, make sure that you visit www.bradystarot.com to book a personal reading with me and also make sure that you sign up for my free weekly newsletter. If this does not resonate with you, make sure that you're checking for your sun, moon, rising, Venus, and Jupiter placements. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Surrender, needing to let go, needing to be in the, I heard the law of acceptance. Okay, whatever that means. Maybe for some of you, you're needing to accept something. Let's look at the tarot cards. The eight of swords, the five of pentacles, the devil. Wow. Okay, Gemini. Very powerful reading thus far. Mm, there's a new start, but you are having to trust. Some of you have serious trust issues with the universe, feeling like things just do not go in your favor. There's a lot of subconscious energy going on here as well with the hangman and the high priestess over here. In the bottom left corner and in the bottom right corner, a lot of subconscious issues going on or just things that you're really thinking about. A lot of stuck energy, feeling a sense of lack, possibly afraid to make a decision because you're afraid that you're not going to have something. Afraid to make a decision because you feel like it's going to leave you in a worse place than when you started. It could be from a financial situation, but that's the thing about taking risks. That's why they're risks. You never really know what's going to transpire. Better than staying stuck, though. It's reminding me of this Jordan Peterson. Whether you agree with him or not, he is brilliant with psychology and things, but he said something about when people just want to stay stuck to the career that they despise and they refuse to take a chance on the career that they want. He said, it's kind of like the devil I know is better than the devil I don't. And it's like, well, how you how can you be so sure? You don't know, you know? So I, I'm kind of getting that. Your life is a canvas, artists, manifestation, creative accountability. I think Leo got this. So for some of you, you have Leo in your chart, or you could be dealing with a Leo. Um, Okay. For some of you, you are a creative. You could be a painter, a writer, a poet, a singer, an author of some sort, an actor, an actress, whatever the case is here. There's definitely a need to sacrifice something, but you're you're too afraid is what that feels like. You're too afraid to go with the devil that you don't know. And the, the devil is there to be certain. Because there's definitely a choice coming in that you're going to have to make, but you're having a hard time trusting it because you may feel like you have a bad rep, uh, a bad relationship with the universe, or maybe you're not always trusting in the universe to bring you what you need. And this is where you need to remember that the universe is always working for you, not against you, no matter how bad it may seem. Okay, I know that sometimes that's easier said than done. Now I just heard from the book, uh, the, the War of Art. No, not the Art of War, the War of Art. I just got done reading it a couple days ago. But he says, um, oh God, of course, now I'm going to forget it. What does he say? Hold on. I was just there on the tip of my tongue. Oh God, of course. All right. Well, I'm not going to get stuck on it, but of course I forgot it now. Let's look at this Eight of Swords. Something about that Eight of Swords energy for what's going on with Gemini here. The Star and the Chariot. So once again, yes, the chart, the the chariot, the chariot. It does talk about bravery. It does talk about moving forth, pushing through, but the chariot is also a decision. Are we going this way? Are we going that way? But you are afraid of something with that five of pentacles and the devil energy here. 
The Eight of Swords can talk about we have options to make. We have options to decide on. We have options that are available to us, but we don't like either of the options, either because we actually know what they are and we just simply don't know what's going to come of it, or we have no idea what's on the other side. And so the definite uh, uh, guarantee for failure is to not take a risk at all, is to not try at all. So there's certainly a decision that you're needing to make. You're needing to believe a little bit more. There's this sense of you just us, not trusting it, feeling like you need to outsmart the universe in some way, seven of swords, you know, feeling like you need to outsmart the universe, uh, feeling like you have to take control of things. And you really don't. You really don't. It's just about moving forward, honestly, and truly, Gemini, just needing to break through that barrier because the eight of swords is self-imposed. It's not other people or the universe doing it, doing it to us. In Rider Waite Tarot or just in tarot deck, that you see in general, you'll see the Eight of Swords and this woman, she's blindfolded and she's surrounded by these little swords that are like stuck in the dirt. And it's like, well, all she's got to do is take off the blindfold and walk past the swords. You know, she or he is just doing it to her himself. And so there's a sense of you needing to push through that barrier here kind of cut through the BS is what I'm getting. You know, the Seven of Swords can talk about kind of outsmarting something or playing something smart. The Seven of Cups is very much all about illusion, about fantasy, about wearing rose-colored glasses as well. And it's like that sense of you feeling like you can't cut through the fog. You can't feel like you can't see what's on the other side. Well, maybe you're not supposed to. Maybe you're not supposed to. Maybe this is a lesson from the universe of courage. Maybe you're needing to kind of explore the unknown. And that's what I'm getting here as well, because the high priestess and the hangman, but especially the hangman, I mean, th this is Piscean energy. So this talks about 12th house energy. It's what's going on in our subconscious. It's the unknown. It's our dream state. It's the things we can't see. Also, uh, pay attention to your dreams at this time. Let's take a look at this five of pentacles, Gemini. The world, the death card. Wow, this. Wow, 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 wow. So this is incredibly profound uh, for me. You need. To, I'm hearing that you need to start taking taking responsibility for your work. There may be something that you work on behind the scenes, or that you want to work on that you have been working on. But it's like you need to actually go for it and not just let it sit there. You know, maybe for some of you, you got a book that's just been sitting there for months. You know, that you've been like working on, and it's probably you know you're probably sitting on a winning lottery ticket, and you don't even know it, but you're just allowing it to sit there because you don't trust the universe, or because you're too afraid or whatever the case may be and that's not me harping on you but I'm just trying to encourage you here because it's like for some of you you have this lack mindset that's starting to change here in the near future something's coming to a culmination it's so interesting because it's almost showing the potential of what could be of what your life could be if you actually took this opportunity I see two sixes here which tell me that which tell me that there's some type of positive change coming in the future and for some of you, you may be getting a helping hand, okay? I heard work, give credit where credit is due. Um, for a lot of you guys, you're finally getting credit for something that you've been working on, something that you've succeeded at. Some of you are actually getting yourself out of a financial hole if that's been an issue, especially because the Five of Pentacles is here, which can talk about finances, et cetera. The Death card is Scorpionic Energy, which is the eighth house, which can talk about shared resources or just resources in general. So there could be something transforming on a uh, 3D level for you guys. Getting some type of recognition for this. How did you do it is what I heard. How did you do it? Oh my God. We have the devil here. It's like almost like something that almost feels impossible. I'm getting like temperance energy. Tell me about that devil card for Gemini. I don't want all those. Tell me about that devil card for Gemini, please. There's just no way. <sighs> you know, sometimes I doubt myself and then things like that happen. So yeah. the devil and the temperance, like I said, making the impossible possible, making the what seemed like impossible look like a walk in the park. 
making what seemed like you were never going to get out of the hole. You just filling that hole and sealing it up. That's what that feels like to me. Definitely making a decision to end whatever this is, to actually change your circumstances for the better. Nobody else. Nine of Swords, Justice card. For some of you, you're going through a legal situation that you're really stressed about. And if that's the case, I feel like it will likely turn in your favor. Uh, just because I see the temperance there, okay? And definitely needing to be a little patient when it comes to your attachments and uh, the things that you are negatively attached to, your fears, your codependencies, just your personal issues as a whole, your addictions, anything like that. Needing to really heal that. I heard rehab, okay, for some of you, okay. For some of you, it doesn't have to be like, all right, you're, you know, you're sticking to something in your arm or nothing like that, okay. But for some of you, it can be like, oh, um, I watch like, you know, six hours of TV every night and I don't get anything done when I should be writing that book that's sitting in there. Or, you know, it's like whatever this attachment is, whatever these negative attachments are, it's like you're realizing that you're needing to find this balance in your life. And therefore you do, you know, you really are. And you're making something that you thought could never happen actually happen. Tell me about that hangman. Okay. The groups that you cover. I don't know what that means. There's the Eight of Swords again. So okay. You guys are starting to realize that if you're gonna have this sense of success, if you're going to move in a particular direction, there may be some people that you have to let go of. There may be a group that you have to let go of. For instance, let's go back to the book idea. Let's say that you really are determined to write this book. You have to write this book. But Instagram and Facebook or Twitter or whatever it is just keeps you constantly engulfed in that. And then you never get anything done. It's like, okay, well, what do you need to sacrifice in order to get this done? What it is, what is it, what it is, what it is, what is it that you need to sacrifice in order to make better decisions for yourself and have some form of success? And that can be really hard, right? Because we don't want to sacrifice the things that make us feel good, but that's that resistance. You know, that's that sense of resistance. It's like, there are things in this world that love it when resistance resistance kind of steps in and rears its ugly head. Because it's like, how many times have we wanted to accomplish something or get up and go to the gym, for instance? And we're like, oh, well, maybe I'll just watch an hour more of TV and resistance is like, yes. You know, it's like, so it's, it's definitely breaking through that barrier, realizing that there is maybe some subconscious issues that you've been stuck to, possibly uh, emotionally attached to something very negative for you that's been keeping you stuck. I'm almost like I'm seeing somebody trying to walk through the mud and it's like they're wearing these like combat boots or they're wearing these like Timberland boots and there's just mud all over them and they're like like they're trying to like lift their feet. That, that's what it feels like almost like engulfed in something. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna look at this high priestess first on the right hand side over here. Blah. Yep, there, there it is again. Yeah, okay. Well, that's great. The tower, the seven of pentacles. So yeah, something has to change now. Something you've been invested in for a while. It just doesn't seem to be beneficial for you anymore. Like I said, it kind of feels like a sense of being stuck in the mud. Also, a needing to trust yourself a little bit more, Gemini, with that uh, high priestess, the eight of swords, the moon, definitely needing to trust yourself a little bit more. Because it's like the moon can talk about us you know, the moon happens is, is taking place before the sun hits. And so it's like, we're needing to find our place, but we don't have any light to help us. We don't have any guidance to help us just our own instincts. Really. It's our instincts and needing to trust your instincts a little bit more, but it's like, sometimes you have this 
this idea or sometimes you have this inkling of something or like you you know you can feel it it's just for like a second in your gut and then you start to question it and you start to dissect it and then you go nowhere so it's like needing to trust yourself a little bit more but also needing to differentiate between what is actually paranoia and like what is real or uh, your intuition and you know your mind what your mind is telling you and the way that you do that the intuition comes like this and then it goes like this. It's very quickly. It's like kind of like water energy, right? It just kind of flows like you feel it in here and then it's gone. It's like that one little whisper, like, right? Like an angel on your shoulder, like, you know, and then it's gone. And you're like, wait a minute, what the hell is that? You know, it's, it's when we take that, hey, stop or whatever, that little whisper that we have. And then we're like adding more words to it. And then we're trying to, you know, just take it for what it is, whatever that, whatever that may be for you. Tell me about that Knight of Cups. The Queen of Cups. Oh, okay. Especially maybe when it comes to love. I heard, I oh, just going to say protecting your heart. And then I got the Three of Swords and the Ten of Cups. I heard protecting your heart. See, that's intuition right there. When you like hear it and then like the temperance card that fell out, you know, it's like, it's just like for you hear it and you just got to say it, or you just got to believe it. It's like comes and it goes real quick. So um, but you can't grab onto it. Don't grab onto it and try to dissect it. Just let it come to you and then it's gone, right? And then you're like, okay, that's what it was. I think that you're being approached. You're being approached by someone. Can I get one more card on this? The Five of Swords. This is attaching to this Ten of Cups and this Three of Swords. Somebody, either a family member, somebody you've been into a relationship with, someone you are in a relationship with, has kind of hurt you or is kind of hurting you here. There's mutual love here, but I, I think it almost feels like you feel like one person loves the other more than than the, the other person. So maybe it's an unequal is kind of what I'm getting. Or there's a questioning on whether or not somebody actually cares about you as much as you care about them. Like I said, whether it's family, whether it's a friend, whether it's a relationship, a past relationship. And, you know, sometimes it's, it's very hard to talk about what love actually is. It's very hard to kind of put love into a box because everybody has their own version of what love is and how they love their love styles, how they receive love, how they want to give and receive love. And some are more mature than others. Some are more immature than others. And so, so it's the sense of somebody maybe not necessarily loving the other person more, but it's almost as if there's this emotional stuntedness uh, where somebody may feel like they have these emotions and they do, right? But they're they're only as far as their experience can take them. So it's like, for instance, right? Uh, I love to write, right? I, I love to write. It's one of my favorite things in the world. I just love it. It's easy. It's one of my gifts. I love to do it, okay? And I'm great at it, right? I'm like, this is great. Like the work that I come out with, this is great, you know? But then let's say that George R. R. Martin or Stephen King, we also have the same birthday. Uh, actually me, George R. R. Martin and Stephen King, September 20th, September 21st and September 21st. Anyway, yeah, me trying to uh, put myself in with those people is a joke. But anyway, so imagine these people come around and they put a story on the table in comparison to mine. Well, one may seem a little bit more experienced, right? One may seem a little bit more experienced than the other. It doesn't mean that the love is necessarily less. There's just less experience behind it, okay? So that's why it's important that we're raising our vibration and getting vibrational matches that come with us. So let's take a look at, or come find us. Let's take a look at this surrender card. Tell me about that surrender card for Gemini. Thank you. The Page of Cups could be surrendering to love, could be surrendering to, for some of you, you could be like expecting too much. That's the thing about ex expectations. 
we always expect people to be the way that we are. We expect people to treat us how we treat them. And then it just ends up making us feel terrible because so-and-so didn't react in the way that we expected them to, or we didn't get the thing that we expected to. So it's kind of that thing of like, let whatever comes in, come in and whatever wants to leave, allow it to leave. The page of cups is like a quick, like, okay, listen, you're either going to take this or you're not because this fish is about to come out of it. It's about to slip out of it. So whether you take it or not, you know, so I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like the people in your life or the things in your life are kind of like that representation of that fish a little bit. Give me one more for that surrender card, please. Like kind of like uh, when you were a child, right? And the Knight of Cups. Okay, it could definitely be about love or it could be about a creative pursuit as well. And I'm seeing that Knight of Cups there as well. So it could be about love. All right, tell me about that life as a canvas. The judgment. For some of you, there's a past thing that you wanted to do. Maybe of a creative pursuit of some sort. Maybe painting, writing, you know, being a, a pianist. I, I don't know, whatever it is. It's like needing to kind of bring that back to life and just see what happens. Because for some of you, there's a very strong fear that if you go towards this thing, you're going to have to lose out on something else. Well, guess what? Sometimes you got to lose out on something else in order to gain something else. Why? Because you need to make room for the next thing. So if I have a closet that's full of clothes, I mean, it's just packed from front to back, but I'm like, I don't really resonate with these clothes anymore. I don't really like these clothes. Okay. Well, if I go and buy a whole new, whole, oh, if I go and buy a whole new wardrobe, am I going to be able to fit those clothes in there? No, I'm not. They're going to end up on the floor and it's going to be an absolute disaster. Why? Because I haven't made room. So sometimes we have to allow ourselves to make these hard decisions, remove these things from our life in order to make room for the better things. Okay. So this looks fantastic, Gemini. Let me know if this resonated for you in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to book a personal reading with me, or if you would like to sign up for my free weekly newsletter, make sure that you visit www.bridiestarot.com. If you'd like to donate to the channel or follow me on my social media platforms, my social media platforms are on the screen and the donation information is in the description box below. I love you, Gemini, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.